brand new video of the targeted individual program the target individual experience so um wanted to do uh this video yesterday wasn't able to because what happened i was so exhausted when i got home um that i literally uh went to sleep all right and and i think the reason why they did what they did in terms of the what looks to me like uh street theater again i'm going to say looks to me because i'm not quite 100 percent sure if what they say happened actually happened right because we all know uh you know false narratives and stuff like that right particularly if you're a ti exposing certain things this was like what they will do in particular when it comes to recognizing how and for me personally particularly when you are watching certain videos right how they will engage in uh sending you to certain uh websites or to certain videos that has been uh made right to engage in again further psychological harassment psychological manipulation all right so imagine uh again you're looking at a video something that you're interested in or what have you and all of a sudden you start to see the those in the video start to engage much more in hand signals um doing hand signals particularly when they say certain things right when certain words or phrases or sentences are used they will say certain things and i want you to listen to uh because i want to play a video right and i'm gonna explain uh what happened uh, before i play the video and just so you know how they can lead you to um these videos so they can again further uh harass you but also and if you're not fully aware of how they are using these tactics and technique right the psychological manipulative tactics how they are embedded into the minds of children particularly uh you know i would say black children and, and hispanic children um by these so-called educators right and and they are racist in nature because they know exactly what they're doing how they're doing it and um you know so when i experience certain things like i experience you know i gotta expose it like i said i don't just think about myself in this i think about every young black child uh, including my own my own kids uh in terms of exposing it for their benefit so that people will understand exactly what's going on and also um you know when i watch this video i watched with my daughter i was doing math for her and what happened after was after i went home the whole incident and then today also um we had an incident where uh my son came home and he says to me oh there's a there was another shooting there was a shooting they said the, they said there was a shooting and i said yeah that happened last night because when i'm gonna go home he was like, no, this happened. That is another shooting today, right? He was like, I was like, really? And then on top of that, early on this morning with the car accidents, right, involving four cars, then my sister just told me that they were another accident, right? So they were two accidents, right? Two accidents today on my block. And on top of that, for what I'm showing you guys, uh, you know, a possible accident that had happened. And um, when I was waiting for the bus, they were a, there was a woman who tried to make a U-turn and almost crashed into another vehicle. Okay? So again, I want you to understand what's being done, uh, how people minds are being uh, manipulated, right? Silent sound spectrum, okay, to manipulate us, to manipulate our emotions, our thought patterns, and um, you know, like I said, people are really not willing to understand what's going on because religion is used as a cover for these technologies that they've created using radio wave and microwave uh, frequency spectrum, all right.
to manipulate our minds. Okay. So I am going to, before I play the video, I just want to put some things in context. Okay. So there's, uh, there's about a few videos I'm going to play. Not all of them, but, um, you know, uh, what I think is, is telling about what has been done to us as TIs and what is being done to the public also. All right. So I'm going to, uh, this is again from the, um, doc psychology secret. It is how they manipulate you and how to recognize and how to defend from dark personality. When you have a good idea of what is going on with the people around you, and we mean truly knowing what they are planning, it can help to keep you safer in a lot of situations. We will look over how to be exceptionally mindful in what we do and what you do on a daily basis and ways that you can build your self-esteem. When you are trying to understand human behavior, it's important to understand yourself. Look at your verbal and nonverbal skills can, uh, looking at your verbal and nonverbal skills can allow you better insight as to what other people are thinking because you won't understand how their bodies work or compared as compared to your own. Trying to figure out when somebody is taking advantage of you can be difficult. There are absolute signs that you can't watch out for. In fact, there are a lot of different great articles surrounding the thoughts of if someone is, someone is or is not trying to take advantage of you. With the ability to see when somebody's attention are less than pure, you will keep yourself better protected and in turn lead a happier life. It can be very frustrating when you when you're uncertain of someone's intentions and even worse when you find out they were simply around to take advantage of you. People are pretty crafty and they will use their emotions against you. Some people love to frame confusion. They may have made it very clear what your you are sorry, you have may have uh, made it very clear what your expectations are, and they simply pretend that they don't understand. If it is somebody that you know fairly well, it can be easy to see what they are trying to take advantage of you uh, because you may know that they are quite smart and usually catch on to things uh, quickly. As I said, usually they Okay. <laughs> um, I'm not even going to tell you what's going on in my mind right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just got to just uh, use my defense mechanism. Okay. Uh, don't worry. Uh, however, if you're dealing with somebody you don't know very well, you may just assume, as I said, dealing here. Certain words, I said certain words, okay? Um, all right, so however, if you're dealing with somebody you don't know very well, you may just assume that they are not very intelligent and need a lot of direction to get something done. Their active confusion, their active confusion can be frustrating and leave you dealing with whatever it was you asked of them. In a relationship, framing a confusion can be horrible, detrimental, horribly detrimental. Let's say that you know your girlfriend or boyfriend is cheating on you, but you simply play them. You may not have exact proof and in their ability to act confused or non-understanding of what you are saying can leave you to sickling, sicken, uh, I'm sorry, can leave you uh, to stricken with a detrimental situation. Pay close attention to the person you are dealing with so you can have a good understanding of whether or not they actually have the capacity to get what you are saying. 
Now, sometimes that can be very, very hard because you have some people, you know, in the beginning of a relationship, everybody masks who they truly are, okay? You don't get to meet the person fully unless, you know, that person tell you up front right away exactly who they are, right? And, and then again, you know, the way how uh, people engage in conversation, particularly the majority of people who love being told lies, being told what they want to hear, um, you know, when you have somebody who's coming and speaking the truth, uh, you know, that, that's a turnoff, right? That, that is a turnoff. Uh, so, and again, when, when court and we all lie a little, right? Some more so than others. Okay. Just because again, you know, it is what you want. So some people will lie to get what they want. Right? It's just, it's human nature. Okay. Some also really like to play victims. You've probably met one person or two in your life that does this. Everything that is going on with them is simply terrible. They do this so that they can have your attention and get you to do what they want. Sympathy is a powerful feeling. If anybody is working through a hardship, naturally good people want to help them. Somebody with malicious intent will use this to their knowledge, to, I'm sorry, to their advan advantage, knowing that you are a good person or realizing that you help people around, you can encourage them to play the part of the victim to gain your trust and sympathy. People that play the victim tends to do this in their everyday lives. Each person had they come into contact with have the uh, contact with they have another sob story to make them feel bad if you are around somebody that has a generally negative attitude this could be because they like to play victims some people do it unconsciously but others do it to get you under their thumb be careful when you're handing out sympathy and empathy for those around you and make sure that they deserve it. In today's world, we hear a lot about shaming. This can be done in a variety of ways and it is insanely detrimental. It can start out with little digs about the way you look, feel, or it may be that you did not do something up to the standard of the person speaking to you. In the real world, they are simply doing this to get you under the thumb when people give us critiques it can be difficult to understand that they may not be true human beings naturally take things to heart shame is a powerful feeling that can tear you down quickly once you start feeling ashamed of yourself and one way or another it is difficult to pull yourself out of it so Recognizing that somebody is simply trying to shame you, as I said, recognizing. Uh, recognizing that someone is trying to shame you uh, into submission is important for your mental health. Using shame does not necessarily always. Read that again. Using shame does not necessarily always make in digs. If you have met a very sarcastic person, they could be using their sarcasm to make you feel ashamed. This type of behavior is unacceptable and it should be acknowledged from the very beginning. There is a time and a place for sarcasm, but when it is making you feel horrible about yourself, you need to put a stop to it right away. Otherwise, you may have given control of yourself and your life to somebody else. Divert attention. When people are trying to take advantage of you, they may use diversion techniques by throwing you off of a certain thought or path. They can easily change the subject and get the eyes off of them. Being aware and staying on track of what you are saying is important. This goes hand in hand with knowing that you're going to say 
and spending the time to think before you speak. With clear conscience, thoughts, you won't have to worry about people trying to divert your attention away from them. When people try to divert attention often, they are trying to pass the blame onto somebody else. This is a very dangerous game and can end up pitting you against a friend, coworker, or family member. So you'll note so as noted, it's extremely important to have your thoughts collected before entering any sort of serious conversation. If truly can help to it truly can help to ensure that you do not get taken advantage of by those who are skilled and diversion that those by those that are skilled and diversion techniques some people will do their very best to make you feel guilty in order to be able to take advantage of you this commonly happens with people that know you better than others when those around you are aware of the fact that you strive to be a good person it can't absolutely be used against you there is nothing wrong with wanting to be a good person but it does tend to make people feel more guilty when they're doing something wrong, when, when they have done something wrong. Everyone has moments in time when they are not the best person, and that's okay. Accepting the fact that everyone makes mistakes can help to ensure that those around you cannot use guilt to control you. Sure, most of us want to make good decision and do the right thing by not only ourselves but those that are around us. Knowing that this is not always the case and we all have screwed ups in, uh, is very uh, helpful. Guilt is a common denominator on and taking control over somebody or using them uh, to your advantage. Denial. Denial is another component that people frequently used to take advantage of others. If you don't have hard evidence against somebody, what is to stop them from simply saying no? I didn't do that. When it comes down to your word against theirs, sorry, it then comes down to your words against theirs. If somebody is vehemently denying what you are saying, eventually, you start to believe it. You may question the, inf the information and where you got it. This can cause distrust among those that you trust the most. Denial is dangerous, especially when you trust your sources. Hearsay is a difficult thing to prove. However, it can be very detrimental to someone's psyche. As you start to doubt whether or not your accusation are true, you may also start to doubt other things in your life. This allows control to the person that is making all of the denial. They can prey on this to try to bend you to their will. In addition, once they have made you accept the fact that their denial is true, they might start looking for favors. Neuro linguistic programming skills can really play, can really help in this department. Most people that are quick to deny something have some facial movements or body movement to give them away. When you start to study these techniques, it can be much simpler to figure out who is riding the denial. When you understand that somebody is simply trying, um, simply denying the accusation to save face or keep them out of trouble, it becomes easier to figure out and understand what is, go what is that is what's going on, okay? The lie. Uh, lies are all around us. From the time we are little, they are lies. In our lives, one that we are told and ones that others have told us, lies are typically trying to take advantage of you. Sometimes the lie that is told is quite harmless and can be brushed off. Other times, there are major lies that can ruin lives. We talked a bit about lying earlier, and when it comes down, 
uh, to it, every person in the world tells a lie on occasion. When we tell a lie with good intent, it does not make it much better than a line with mild intent. But it is more understandable. Sometimes it is simply easier to tell a white lie than it is to hurt somebody's feeling or cause turmoil for somebody that you care about. Okay, that's um tips and techniques to defend from. The way that we can inflict dark psychology upon others and manipulate them to do what we want to sympathize with our cause, to get information out of those people is complex in nature simply due to the complexity of the human mind. Dark psychology is complicated and works in a range of different ways on different types of people because of all kinds of psychology. And all people are equally complex in nature. So it can be very difficult to fully learn how to manipulate others and get them to side with you at work or in your personal life. Similarly, uh, similarly, same pronouncing that right. <laughs> uh, similarly, si similarly, it can be very difficult to pick out people who also know how to manipulate others and defend yourself against their tactics while employing your own. The most important part of defending yourself against dark psychology and all other kinds of persuasion and manipulation is that you always have to be aware of yourself, your body, your positioning, and the way you come off all other people around you. It can be exhausting to always be keeping up with other people this way but it is the best and most secure way that you can make sure you're obscuring yourself from other people who might be trying to manipulate you. In general, most people who will try to bend their words and yours in order to fit their own manipulative narrative will fall under a certain few tells. These are some of the ways you can most easily tell if someone is trying, if someone is lying to you or trying to use you in order to get something they want out of you or someone else. Watch how the person stands. Observe the way they tend to move as subtly as you possibly can. You can't, you don't want them to know you're watching them or their body language or else it might become uncom unreadable. Uh, once they become aware that they might be in the middle of being watched by you or anybody else, they can change their body language and make it neutral enough so you can't actually get, a, get any uh, worthwhile information out of the way they're standing or holding themselves. Aside from that, take a look at their posture in general first before breaking it down any further. Someone hunched over might be shy or anxious, much less likely to be watching you or trying to manipulate you. People who can manipulate you and persuade you the best are the most confident kind of people. They have the ability to persuade because they're confident and they make people comfortable in their presence. This is the best way you can tell if somebody's trying Somebody, if someone might be trying to sweet talk you or persuade you to their side or to believe their side of the story or argument. Charisma is one of the, mo of the main selling points of anyone who wants to get under your skin and into your head. Observe how they talk to you and the tone they take with other people overall, especially when they're in public or in front of people who would logically want who uh, people they would logically want to impress. As I said, who is a whistle. <laughs> All right. Um, in front of the people who they want to impress or make proud or the people who they're trying to manipulate. Manipulators 
take their charisma to an entirely other level. And they do everything in their power to try and get them to side with them by showering them with praise, compliments, and most importantly, stories about themselves. Now, there was a word that I said, um, uh, power. So I said the word power and Okay, very short, very, they're doing it very short bursts. Again, even shorter than before, possibly like one or two seconds. No, you know, uh, usually they usually do a couple of seconds, maybe uh, up to five, six, seven seconds. But now they're very, very keen on just keeping it very subtle and very short, right? All right, let's see here. Um, while it may seem as though telling stories about yourself might have the opposite effect, most manipulators tell small anecdotes about things which have happened to them recently or in their childhood, which both endear them to the person they're trying to manipulate and find common grounds between themselves and the other person. In addition, telling these small anecdotes make the person seem more approachable and friendly and much less likely to be standoffish. The person gets their metaphorical foot in the door in a social sense by making themselves seem much more real and genuine to the people they're talking of, uh, talking to. If it's you who are probably trying to manipulate, pay close attention to the content of their anecdote. Do they incriminate themselves in the detail of the story? Take note of what they focus on within the anecdote or story. Do they seem to focus on their own achievement or the good things they did or which happens to them? It is a natural, hu this is naturally human. As we have a good uh, memory of things, which brings us pride. Again, humans are naturally more than a bit selfish. However, there is a line to be drawn between focusing on your achievement for your own sake and for the sake of others. Expert manipulators have no intention of focusing on their own good deeds for their own sake. They only want to focus on positive achievement and pride so that other people can see what they've done also. Note how they act when you try and confront them more head on about their achievement. See if they shrink away from that line of questioning. It's, in, it's more endearing to people for someone to have, to someone to be humble, even if they've done amazing things than to own up to the expected pride taken for that action. People who are good at manipulation, manipulating and also amazing at fishing for compliments and praise from other people, it reaffirmed to them that the person they are trying to manipulate does have positive feeling towards them. And it gives them the go ahead to keep trying to persuade them. Don't try too hard to throw them off guard, by, but try and find a moment where their act breaks down. Manipulative people in the business setting out with a normal formal group of people are much less likely to let their emotions out or allow for any burst of frustration or anger. This is as I'm about to say anger. This is unsightly to them. And it makes them seem more childish compared to other people who might who they have who they might be competing with. Try to find a moment where they let their feelings out in a negative way. Specifically, watch their facial muscle and any uh, twingles, twings of anger that uh, might flash across it. The body is much easier to control when it comes to putting on an act for others, but the face is smaller and much more refined in the sense of motor control. Thus, it, it's much harder to control it. 
in times of intense emotion. If there's ever a moment where the person you're observing should be getting angry and you want to see how much of what they're putting on is fake, don't, uh, don't want their body. Instead, watch their eyes. It's supposed to be don't watch their bodies. Uh, instead, watch their eyes and their lips as well as their face as a whole. Okay? If you follow these tips, you should be able to spot manipulators much more easily. However, in order to better understand the people you're trying to manipulate, well, I'm not going to get into that because we're not, we're not here to try to manipulate anybody. So um, let's go on to, um, and now we're going to hypnosis. Okay. We know that they can hypnotize people. All right. That's, that's a fact. And I really don't want to get into that right now. Um, let's go to um, the grape of the mind. Okay. And let's see, I was going to talk about hypnosis, but um, there's something here that I saw that I wanted to. Um, All right, there you go. Let's, let's do this, all right? Needle in the truth. During the Second World War, the technique of the so-called truth serum, the popular name for narcoanalysis, was developed to help soldiers who had broken down under the strain of battle. Through narcoanalysis, uh, by means of injection of sedative, they could be brought to remember and reveal the hyper emotional and traumatic moment of their war experience that has given them an into that have driven them into acute anxiety neurosis. Gradually, a useful mental first aid technique was developed, which helped the unconscious to reveal its secret with the patient when while the patient was under the influence of the narcotic. How does the truth serum work? The principle is simple. After an injection, the mind in the kind of half sleep is unable to control its secrets and it helps them slip from the hidden reservoir of frustration and repression into the half conscious mind. In certain acute anxiety cases, such enforced uh, provocation may alleviate the anxieties and pressure that had led to breakdown. But narcoanalysis often does not work. Sometimes the patient mind uh, resent this chemical intrusion and enforce intervention. And such a situation often obstruct the way for deeper and more useful psychotherapy. The fear of unexpected mental intrusion and coercion may be pathological in character. When I first published my concept of mental side and brainwashing, I received dozens of letters and phone calls from people who were convinced that some outside person was trying to influence them and direct their thoughts. All right, T.I., do we know anything about that? <laughs> right? I think uh, a lot of psychiatrists at the time or therapists at the time, when it comes to um, understanding the technological part of these sort of weapons being created uh, for mind control, right? Again, this is why you want to have documentation that shows that this is indeed a possibility of what was happening to you, what has been done to you, okay? So like I said, research is, is key, all right? Knowledge is key. You got to understand the lingo. You got to understand not only the, the technological processes and and the definitions and meanings of technical uh, things, but also psychological as well, okay? Uh, this form of mental intrusion delusion may be the early stage of a serious psychosis in which the victim has already repressed to primitive magic feeling. In this state, 
the whole outside world is seen and felt as participating in what is going on in the victim's mind. There is, as it were, no real awareness of the frontiers between I, the person, and the world. Such fear-ridden persons are in constant agony because they feel themselves um, the victim of many mysterious influences which they cannot check or cope with. They feel continually endangered. Psychologically, the fear of intrusion from the outside world can be partially explained with a fear of the intrusion of their own fantasies from the inside, from the unconscious. They are frightened by their own hidden unconscious thoughts, which they can no longer check. Um, again, uh, let me just say this. Uh, this book was written in the 1950s. So a lot of the things we know now, okay, we can say that, <laughs> um, yeah, we can be from the outside influence within with mental intrusive thoughts and it's not delusional. Okay. Um, it is factual, right? And it can lead to delusion. Absolutely. It can lead to a mental breakdown, uh, the development of psychosis within the victims. Absolutely. Okay. But again, had this book been written in, let's say, uh, 2010 or, or even, you know, 2023, right? Uh, I think the the wording would be different because there would be the um, the acknowledgement of certain psychological tactics and methods and uh, weapons used to manipulate people's mind. Uh, it would be a different set of words used here. And instead of saying uh, paranoid, it would be uh, non-paranoid. Right, but being attacked with these weapons or psychological program can actually drive a, a person to paranoia. Okay. All right. Um, so it would be a vast oversimplification to stick to stick an easy psychiatric label on all such feeling of mental persecution, for there are many real outside mental pressures in the world, and there are many perfectly normal people who are continuous, continually aware of and distributed, uh, hold on. Uh, who are continu continuously aware of and dis disturbed, okay, and disturbed by the barrage of stimuli directed at their minds through propaganda, advertising, radio, uh, television, the movies, the newspaper, all the gibbering mechanics whose voices never stop. These people suffer because a cold, mechanical, shouting world is knocking continuously at the doors of their mind and disturbing their feeling of privacy and personal integrity. There is the further question of whether or not the drugs used in the truth serum always produce the desired effect of compelling the patient to tell the inner truth. Experiment conducted at Yale University in 1951, J.M. McDonald, uh, on nine person who receive intravenous injection of sodium amethol, the so-called truth serum, showed result show interesting results tending to weaken our faith in this drug. Each of the patients prior to the injection have had suggest have had been suggested a false story relating to a historical period about which he was going to be questioned. The parameters are both the truth and the false story. Let me quote from the report. It is of interest that the three subjects diagnosed as normal maintain their suggestive story. Of this, the six subjects diagnosed as neurotic, two promptly reveal the true story, two made partial admissions, consistent of a complex pattern of fantasy and truth. One communicated 
with most what most likely was a fantasy as truth and the one obsessive compulsive individual maintained his cover story except for one parapraxia faulty or blunder in action in recent case cases american law uh, courts have refused to admit as evidence the result of truth serum tests largely on the basis of psychiatric conviction that the truth serum uh, treatment is misnamed that in fact narcoanalysis is no guarantee of getting at the truth it may even be used as a coercive threat in case in cases where victims are not aware of its limited action still another danger more closely related to our subject is that a criminal investigator can induce and communicate his own thoughts and feel into his victims thus the truth serum may cause the patient with a weak ego to yield to the interventionist synthetically synth synthetically uh, injected thoughts and interpretation in exactly the same way the victims of the victim of hip, high, um, hypnosis may take over the suggestion implanted by the hypnosis additionally this method of inquisition by uh, drugs contains some physical danger I myself have seen cases of thrombosis develop as a result of inter, uh, venous medication of barbiturates. I'm sorry, barbiturates. All right. Uh, experiments with uh, mescaline, which started 30 years ago in the 1920s, are suddenly fashionable again. Aldous Huxley, in his recent book, the doors of perception describe the artificial chemical paradise which he experienced after taking the drugs also known as uh, peyote it can simulate all kind of pleasant subjective symptoms but these are nevertheless uh, delusive in character I did not want to start a clinical argument with another author, yet his own uh, euphoric, uh, ecstatic reaction to masculine are not necessarily the same as those other people experience. Masculine is dangerous stuff when not used under medical control. And anyway, what does Huxley want to sell artificial? Why does Huxley want to sell artificial heaven? Okay. And so when I, I was just reading this, I'm just like this, you know, our water supply is filled with uh, pharmaceutical drugs, right? And they put this in the water supply just so that they can have control over our minds. All right. These chemicals make us more susceptible to suggestions, right? So fluoride, for example, fluoride is a chemical agent in which uh, will cause um, people's mind uh, to be easily uh, controlled, right? easily manipulated. So that's why fluoride is used in our water. It is used in our toothpaste. Now you guys should go look up what fluoride does. Right? You'd, be, you'd be quite shocked. All right. Uh, so there is very, there is a very serious social danger in all these methods of chemical intrusion into the mind. True, they can be used as a careful aid to psychotherapy, but they can also be frightening instrument of control in the hands of men with an overwhelming drive to power. Okay? In addition, they fortify more than ever in our aspirin age the friction that we have to use miracle drug drugs in order to become free acting agents the propaganda for chemical elation for artificial ecstasy ex, ecstasy and pseudo nirvanic experience contains with invitation to men to become chemically chemical dependent and chemical dependent are weak people who can be made use of by any tyrannical political uh, 
potentate. Uh, the actual propaganda carried on among general practitioners using treatment with all kinds of anxieties and mental disturbance with new drugs has the same kind of dangerous implication. So again, the drugs, we know that a lot of drugs, particularly a lot of antipsychotic drugs, they have very, very serious adverse reaction. All right. It can lead to people becoming uh, aggressive. It leads to violence. It leads to self-deletion. Uh, lead to um, neurological issues. It also leads to issues of your um, nervous system. Okay. And, um, you know, they, they still uh, recommend drugs to people, right? Uh, they don't do talk therapy. It is uh, drugs, okay? Anyhow, um, let's see. All right, I'm getting tired, <laughs> but let me, I want to continue this because I want to um, do, let's see, which video? Okay, uh, here, uh, actually, no, let me, let me play this. This is uh, Dan Brown, right? Listen to what he says. But there's a point halfway through the trick where it's, it's safe for the person to shuffle the cards, but if they shuffle at the beginning, it would ruin the whole trick. So maybe at the beginning you shuffle yourself as, as a magician, but it's a full shuffle. You're not really shuffling the cards, but it looks like you are. But halfway through the trick, you hand them the deck, and you say to the spectator, who so far has not shuffled the cards, you say to them, uh, shuffle the cards again, but this time do it under the table. Now, that's doesn't make any sense because they haven't shuffled the cards before, but in as much as they're now taking the cards and shuffling them under the table and following that instruction, you're starting to play with the memory of what actually happened in the trick. So now you're essentially planting a false memory that they had shuffled the deck before. And it's not a guaranteed thing, but when they start to narrate the trick afterwards, you, you start to see how these false memories are, are, are fitting into place. So a big part of performing any sort of magic is controlling that narrative afterwards by, by playing with things like like false memories. So a, a, any magician becomes very good at doing that sort of thing. My toolkit is the ongoing experience of both the audience and the people that come up on stage. So I use rapid hypnotic induction techniques with people that come up on stage and they vary in efficacy from night to night but um, generally they work. So there for example I'm using, I'd be using an unconscious process there of, of using bafflement and bewilderment to my advantage so if you imagine that somebody okay so listen to what he said right rabbit hypnosis using bewilderment All right this is um when you're a ti and they engage in the heavy blitz periods right that's what they're doing they're using uh rapid bewilderness they're attacking you um so you, you know all of a sudden you're, everywhere you turn, there's someone there doing hand signals or what have you. And again, as to now, uh, after that intense moment, they now come in with individuals who are going to be used to send you uh, a certain similar message. All right. I talked about it yesterday when I went to the, um, the, was it yesterday? Yes, I went to the food bazaar after being bombarded inside the food bazaar after I turned off my um, recording, right? And then as I was um, leaving the food bazaar, right? They, I think they sent a, a, was a black woman in there, right? And they were looking at me and, you know, as if, you know, don't be talking to no black woman, right? Then today at my daughter's school, again, engaging in the this sort of uh, reinforcement in terms of whatever subliminal message, right? And also, uh, whenever I tell my son and my daughter I love them, right? The use of the sirens. And, you know, it, it's very important for you to understand how they are doing these things to uh, get you or trying to get you to one self isolate, uh, become cold like a robot, and you know this is this is explained in in um, 
the grip of the mind and also Dark Sakaji secret is to make man uh, almost robot like, right? No emotions, no feeling, no no guilt, no shame. Uh, you know, because again, that's the ultimate um, lone wolf tactic, right? And also, it is uh, uh, taking away as a human being your ability to to love to uh, be uh, happy to be excited to be sexually aroused to be um, you know a good person right to be uh, uh, intellectual or smart you know, it is to, to strip you of everything, of your dignity, right? And what's left is not, and what, what's left is the shadow of a human being. A human being on the outside, but inside, uh, it's nothingness, okay? This is what they try to do. So you need to be very careful about what it is that they're doing, all right? Um, so again, the Darren Brown clip talks about how, again, they can use rapid hypnosis, Okay, rapid hypnosis to manipulate us. So imagine, you know, there's, uh, let's say, uh, uh, two million Darren Browns walking around. Okay? Imagine the havoc that these people can, can do. And, what, and we know that they have done a lot. Okay, particularly in the black community, particularly to black people. Right. And they use the religious, uh, you know, the, the religious believers. They're already indoctrinated. Okay. And because of that indoctrination, it causes them to be more easily uh, persuaded. Right. This is why the curse of persuasion, uh, a lot of religious organizations engage in those practices. Right. Because they also get their 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 uh, members uh, to participate, because the members themselves are also manipulated. They just don't know it. Okay, but I want to play this clip from Dr. Amos Wilson. It's called uh, "Gullible Negroes." <laughs> I'm sorry, that gullible Negroes, <laughs> gullible Christians. <laughs> oh shoot! But I think what is even more interesting is the fact that the most devastating violence is perpetrated by your average law-abiding citizen, by your good Christian citizens. Haven't you thought it very peculiar that when the army recruits, it does not recruit killers? Here is the greatest killing machine in the world, right? And yet it weeds out killers. It looks at your criminal records and says, we, we really don't want any criminals in here. What then do they want? Nice American people, Christian boys, right? Law-abiding boys, high school graduates, People with what? Clean records. Because they are the most conducive to making into killers. Apparently they make the best killers. And if you look at the record of the U.S. Army, that would seem to be the case. But you see, people want to make you think that the average so-called gang kid in the gang out here is fundamentally different from the rest of us. Therefore, they must have some kind of unique genetic orientation. And we don't look at the reality of the situation. Those people we won't permit to be our killers. We want people who don't have records to be our killers. Why? Well, they've been trained to submit to authority only without thinking, you see. 
They've shown by their clean records that uh, they're not rebels. So if their officer says, take that hill, off they will go. It doesn't matter what, what, is, what the point is. They're used to what? Bowing to authority and obeying authority unthinkingly. They have been trained into conformity. They have been psyched out by something called being a man so that despite the immorality of what they may be called on to do, when you challenge their manhood, they will then go out and do the most dastardly deeds of all, you know, so you, you hype them on that bit. They've been trained to respond to patriotic music, so you play the music and beat the drums and off they march to war. It doesn't matter what it is. They have been trained to believe that as Americans or whatever nationality, they are morally superior to their enemies and that their enemies are less human than they. And therefore, you can even use their very religion as the key to getting them to kill by designating the other people as pagans, non-believers, and so forth. That's why you want the moral ones, you see. They really make good killers. All right, let me just pause it there. And, um, and again, you know, I love this brother. You know, he's an ancestor. I uh, had bought his books. Um, well, actually, one book I bought. Or is it two? Um, but one of the books I bought from him is called "The Falsification of the African Consciousness." Again, you know, just a, now I don't get into it, but you know, it's one of the books that I bought. But as he's saying here, right? The reason why the dark triads use the religious believers is because they are easily persuaded and easily manipulated. Not only just by their by using their religion to get them to join in and participate in the crimes that they commit against us, okay, but also, right, they are more uh, easily to manipulate because of that religion, and manipulate by who? By those in the authoritative position, okay. So you got to understand that these are the uh, uh, so-called good Christians, right? The so-called true believers, even though they don't truly believe uh, what they say they believe, okay? Because as soon as you indicate to them that they don't believe in the same God you do, you're ready to go and do them in. So do these average moral law-abiding people also have a genetic marker for violence and yet it has been under the banner of religion and patriotism that most of the killing and death in the world has occurred. And then they want to come to you and convince you that the kind of violence that occurs on our streets, which we must end, of course, represents our children having some kind of genetic marker for violence. <laughs> and this is media. Media. And as you said earlier, Sister Dobson, this is the way the game is set up. So the, the whole thing is ridiculous, but people fall for it. Because again, we, uh, we fall for authority. The other thing we fall for, of course, is what I call the medicalization of social problems. A little sentence I didn't get a chance to finish on Gil's show there. We'll do anything if the doctor says so. Why are you taking that poison? Well, the doctor told me to take it every two hours. Doesn't matter what it is. The doctor says do it. So I do it. <laughs> so what do we do then? We take psychiatrists, doctors, MDs, and when they put labels on our children, we're ready to let them do anything to these children they want to because they are the doctors. Abs absolutely. 
And not only the, not only the doctors, but you have individuals within religious organization who have uh, these so-called religious conversion schools. And if you have a Netflix account, go and watch the Netflix documentary. Um, what was the name of it? The, I think it's the program. That's the name of it. And it's about these middle-class white families who are sending their kids. And also you had a few black uh, kids in there to these so-called conversion uh, uh, schools or uh, facilities in which they were abusing these children. They were abusing them. Okay. So it's not just the doctors, right? Again, you, there are those who, and again, it's for profit, of course, it comes to these sort of coercive control uh, programs, right? It's profit and control without a doubt. Okay. So I'm going to uh, end this clip here and I want to go to this uh, video. Like I said, when I was, um, hold on, let me make sure that's it. Uh, what else? Yes. So I was doing, you know, the beginning of the week, I talk about how, was well, it the beginning of the week? I'm sorry, not the beginning of the week. Um, over the weekend, with the color orange, right? Again, I want you to understand how they will direct you to go to certain places, for me, certain websites, you know, and, uh, and what will happen is that because they know that I was going to have to help my daughter do her math homework, and, you know, they'll play with the YouTube algorithms to put, uh, like I, you know, I usually when I do a math to her, I usually, uh, go to YouTube and I, in the search option, I put in, um, fourth grade math homework, uh, whatever module and whatever lesson it is. Okay. And, you know, they'll give you recommended videos. Okay. So the, I usually click on the first video to see what, it's, what it is about, if it's the same thing. So that's what, you know, I do all the time. Right, so this uh, video came up. And I'm helping my daughter. And we're looking at this video. And I started to notice something. I started to notice that when this instructor is doing certain things, Right, he is using his hands a lot, doing these sort of hand signals, certain words or letters or numbers being said. Uh, he will engage in those same type of hand signals that these perps outside do, right? And also when they hijack my kids' consciousness and their mother had consciousness, even family members' consciousness, they do these same kind of hand signals, right? So um, let me get to. Hold on a sec here. I'm only gonna play the parts where he's doing sassy. Let me let me uh Okay. Now you guys hear the sirens that I said the hand signals. Yeah, I'm gonna call them out. You can use your sirens all you want. I'm going to expose them. Alright, your sirens is not going to intimidate me into not exposing what does it do. And like I said, as a as a as understanding that how they've gotten rid of most of the black males in the public education system right you know i now i understand i mean i understand why but now i truly understand why they are basically brainwashing and indoctrinating uh our children okay not just by the uh you know the the school curriculum that they have to do but these teachers engaging in psychological warfare Okay, and these these white males, and who are they? Who are they teaching? Predominantly in the public school system, black and brown kids, black and Hispanic kids. Okay, so I want let me let me do this uh, before I. And you put yours. I put the date as well. What's today? Well, it's today where I pose each rectangle into the number of rows as indicated. And you see this example here, that there are three rows we're instructed to do. 
lines, okay. side to side like the horizon, to decompose each rectangle where and when you are in this wonderful world of ours. Our instructions, okay. draw horizontal lines, I mean side to side like the horizon, to decompose. Okay. Now, as he said, decompose, you'll see he touches his head, right? What do they do in the cursive persuasion program, right? It is to break you down, right? It is to decompose your mind, your life, right? This is why they microchip you. This is why they, they can monitor your thoughts. They subject things into your, talk, into your thoughts, right? They put things in, in, into your thoughts. Right? It is to menticide you, right? The decomposition, just as in Zotsuzum, right? The decomposition of a person's life, their mind. This is why you'll see him uh, uh, grabbing his head when he says it. Each rectangle into the number of rows. Now, as he is pointing to the screen, I want you to look at his uh let me do this let me let's do it this way okay so as he's pointing he's pointing with his thumb like who points with their thumb okay it's as indicated and you see this example here that there are three rows we're instructed to do okay. use the model to give the shaded area as both a sum of okay, I'm going to let me just do a search. All right, okay. A little bit more of this for ourselves. Okay. And um, in listen, what for ourselves. Just do? <laughs> Hold up. And, which is a total of three six. One half is three times one six, which is three six. Okay, let's go on and do a little bit more of this. Okay, touches the nose, right? For ourselves. Points with his finger. And See, that's pointing with his, with his pointing finger. All we're given now is Again, a tape diagram. What he is, what is he doing? What, what, I, what do you guys, uh, what do I show you guys? Watch. B and Sticking C, the finger in the all ears. we're given now, right? Look. now is the tape diagram. Okay, and then. With the uh, instructions of how many. Okay, let's go on. Okay, now. We'll read the instructions, but we're essentially doing the same thing. They're just giving us equivalent fractions to start with instead of a tape diagram and number of rows. Okay. Which actually, in a way, is a little bit easier. Okay, Four I want you guys times, to watch this. I wrote one sixteenth. Which is still equal to what? Four sixteenths. All right. Hey, look at that. We're moving and grooving. Let's go see what treasures number two has in store for us. And in number two, we'll read the instructions, but we're essentially doing the same thing. They're just giving us equivalent fractions to start with instead of a tape diagram and number. There you go. See? Or rows, which actually in a way is a little bit easier. And as he did that, and I said, there you go, you see? That car honking. Easier and, and helps you to learn this better. Believe me, this equipment. Uh, um, see so the white supremacy sign. Look at the white supremacy the sign. Homework. Believe me, this okay. equipment. Let's there go, go. go. see what well, treasures number two has in store for us. And number two, we'll read the instructions, but we're essentially doing the same thing. They're just giving us equivalent fractions to start with instead of a tape diagram and okay. number of rows. So handsome. Which actually by supremacists. In a way, is a little bit easier and, and helps you to learn now this watch. better. Believe me, this... There you go. I want to go back. Let's pause this. Let's and helps you to learn this better. Believe me, this... There you go. Okay. There you go. ...gram and number of rows, which actually, in a way, is a little bit easier and, and helps you to learn this better. Believe me, this... There you go. By supremacist sign. Equivalent fractions can be tricky, and I actually like the way Eureka Math does it, despite all of my growth. 
Again, right just look at the hand signals. Look at the, how he moves his hand. Homework, He'll slightly stick his Tonight thumb out better, due to um, the white the supremacist page looks. Um, but you will have design. this mastered. If you like do this work and dig in. And if you, I'm not, you, I'm not playing the entire video, but if you watch the video, he uses certain uh, phrases that is uh, that what uh, that black teenagers would say. He says some of those things, right? You will know this for the rest of your life and you will be a happier person because of it. We're going to draw area models to show the decomposition represented by the number sentences below. For example, one third equals two six. That's what they mean by the number sentences. Represent the decomposition as a sum of unit fractions adding one something plus one something, right? Unit fractions, adding up some, and a multiplication. Palm, how uh, uh, he just, again, you can tell this is very Represent scripted. Represent the decomposition as a sum of unit fractions, adding one okay. something plus one something, right? Unit fractions, adding up some. And the palm fixation. And a multiplication sentence. All right, hold on. So you see, it's the same thing we we're doing before. Just now, we have to draw the area model. So one third equals two six. Now, let me uh, go to. That's right here. Okay. So when I talk about the color orange, right? And this is what you know. As he was doing this, I'm like, oh, and and immediately as he shaded in that, right? There. Was it the anyway? It was either a car honk or sirens? I'm, I'm gonna do both, All right? Immediately, okay. And since I say one third is well, how many times did I write one six? Two times, two times one six, which still magically is two six. All right, see, so what we just did right there. That's what we're going to do for each of these, although some of them, the, the drawing gets a little more complicated, but not horribly so mercifully on this one. So now we're starting again with one third, and we will show that three ninths is an equivalent fraction. Okay. And the point, point in his finger. All right. So, and you know what? I let me go back a second. Sorry, I should have to make it perfect here. I should designate that this is one third, and underneath they like to do it this way to show that it's also two six. So just let me have it perfectly correct there. All right. So anyway, back to B. I'm going to partition this rectangle into thirds. All right. Let me see. Okay. All right. And now I want to get, I'm how many lines down. do I have to draw? Well, these are thirds. So here's how you can think about it yeah. mathematically. We really didn't have to on that first one because it was kind of obvious. Okay. See what he's doing? The touching of the upper lip, which is what they do also. Yes. But you say, what's the relationship between, let's look at the denominators, between three and nine? What's times three? That means we're going to make three rows. Remember how in number one it would say like two rows or three rows? Now here, this is how you figure out how many rows. You say, hmm, three times what is nine? Times three, so I need three. Why is the premise sign again? Three, the number three, okay? And as, I, as he did that. Three times what is nine? Times three, so I need. Look, why is the premise sign? three rows so and now keeping in mind that to draw three rows holy toledo what happened there all right i see it's like hey you want me to line it up with that and i'm like no thanks dude all right so i have to draw two lines to make three okay, rows let's go over, let's move you see that because what's the relationship between the denominator of three and 12 it's times four so after we make our one third model we'll need to make four rows to have twelfths so I do need to try to make this a little bit, what happened there? Uh, a little bit bigger, maybe just a little bit. What do I need? Well, three. 
Okay, here's what I want to show and you guys. And now I'm going to switch back to black, get the line. I'm going to draw a dashed line. Now, what's my factor here? How many uh, rows okay. well, do I need? Now, what I also notice that whenever he says the word, I talk about how they say certain words that make him a certain letters, right? So whenever he, he says, uh, whenever he's, he's using his hands and he comes upon a word that starts with R, like row, right? He will look where he plants his thumb, right? Well, three. And then making his hands like a gun. You see that? That's what he's doing. What's this relationship between three and 15? 15 is five times three. So I need to make five. Okay. So like I said, they will do these things where they'll direct you to go to, uh, I shouldn't say direct, but they will steer you to go into look at uh, a video based on their preconditioned tactics and methods for what they've done to you. In the beginning, you know, start using orange. They start to see much more. A lot of people wearing orange a lot. Uh, and of course, we're uh, we're in surveil I'm surveilled. So of course, you know, I've been trying to help my daughter with doing her homework for the past over the weekend, right from Saturday. We didn't do anything Saturday because you know she wasn't feeling too well. Um, uh, did we? Uh, we might have did some, and I didn't even watch this video, right? But this was yesterday when I put in the search, you know, for grade math. The first video comes up, which was this. Normally, that's what I do. I'll click on the first video. So they know, they understand what it is that you do. And also, they di they'll direct you to these uh, things so that now that, you know, he's doing this and he's coloring with orange, and I'm like, oh, okay. That's why I start to see a lot of people wearing orange because they want to send me on his page. This guy's a white supremacist and he has been, uh, you know, he's taught how to target and manipulate TIs or anybody for that matter. Okay. And these are built in condition. So when children, particularly black children is looking at these videos and they see all this stuff, when they get old or what have you, they're able, because like I said, you already conditioned. It's just in your subconscious. Right now, as you get older, and you know, for whatever reason, they will now activate that programming within you. It is programming. They are program. They program us in the school system, not just by again academic curriculum, but they program us using dark psychology that bypass our subconscious. And embeds itself in our subconscious, bypass our conscious mind and embeds itself into our subconscious. Okay? Rows for which I need to draw four so lines. See. Remember how that works. So, this is actually right, good. So, not ashamed at all. So, now, did I do it correct? Always stop and check. All right, do I have fun? Okay, again, I want you to understand. Let me, let's do this. I wish I could do this in, in slow oh. motion. I hope yours are better than mine. I'd be proud. And not ashamed at all. So now, did I do it correct? Always stop and check. Okay. Check. All right, do it. Now look, again, look at how he points. <clears throat> so sometimes, you know, because he said check and correct, right? Again, sometimes you'll see when he points, you see, even though he has his pointing finger, is slightly bent in, but more of his thumb. So his thumb become more pronounced. Okay. I have five out of 15. One, two, three, four, five out of five, 10, 15. Yes. So this, and make the bracket nice and small. So I, okay, that's all cool. right. And so that is, of course, how many 15ths? Well, it's five 15ths, just as you'd want and expect it to be. And I just decided just now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a fresh sheet of paper to do E and F. So I don't have to like all kinds of squeeze it in there. So let's go on and do two E and F. Roll film. Ah, that's better. <laughs> All right. So he goes, roll for him. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure if I recorded the guy uh, living in this building. He was inside, but he was wearing a shirt that says um, a film crew. <laughs> right. Uh, now, I'm getting, now I'm getting an echo again. 
See, this is how they manipulate the software. Now I'm hearing the echo. Anyhow. A little room to stretch out here. Okay, so E and F are the same, except Let's now we're looking at both cases. Again, we're starting with look one how he fifth. Moves so, this hand palm fixation. It's nice a little more room here. Huh? Very, very. So let me draw this scripted. hereabouts, and I can do uh, the math up above. It's precise in how they're doing it, uh, and he's right. fully aware. Make about that big. Okay, and now I need to divide condition this condition and method and tactics, fifths. and he's doing it. Okay, because I'm starting by modeling one fifth, so I need to draw four lines, about as evenly spaced as I can make them. I'm trying to see and where else. Okay, two, let's go here. Which of course is two tenths. And so you don't get confused because I have students sometimes say, well, well that's two twentieths because they'll do, you know, whatever kind of multiplication. Instead of tenths, think anything else. Think tenths, like tenths, that, you know, like camping tenths. So two times one tenth would be two tenths, right? So they don't magically become something other than tenths just because you, you magically okay. become something. Other so, so listen, when you see other he, than tenths, just because you because you have two of them, right? They're still tenths. They're born tenths. They die tenths. They tenths, like tenths that you know, like camping tenths. So two times one tent would be two tenths, right? Okay. Now, as he opens his hand, his hand is his fingers. Now his four fingers are now pointing down, and the thumb. You can see he's going to do a little push of the thumb. Watch. So they don't magically become. Let's go back and like watch tents, it again. Like tents that you know, like camping tents. So two times one tent would be two tents, right? So they don't magically become okay. something other you see, than as tents. You drops the because you have two of them. Hand down. The right? They're still tents. Goes out. They're born tents. They die tents. The tents. And he's right, speaking so in this. Oh, you know, like in this. Uh, back in uh, the 18th century or 17th century in America, in the South, where they talk. And draw, and now I'm going to draw up. And again, here that could be bit. nothing but trying to give room for my wonderful visage. Okay, the next lesson. Now we'll here we go again. Different we'll see there. the white supremacy. But I won't be a spoiler. No, I won't. Okay, now I need to partition it. What's the relationship between 5 and 15? What's the factor there? It's there a factor go. of 3. All right, try to mask it. Now it's a factor of 3. Now, before when he was doing that. He didn't say factor of three. Okay, go back and look. I could be wrong, but anyhow, this is how they're masking the white supremacist signal. Five times three is 15. So I need three rows for which I need to draw two lines. Okay. And yourself always, does my answer make sense? I've been saying that since lesson one of module one. You would find that mistake and you'd say, ha ha, I found my mistake. Because we look at this and say, okay, we have 1, 2, 3 out of 1, 2, 3, 15. Okay, 1, 3 out of 15, 3 fifteenths, that's what we were trying to do. If you drew three lines, you would have something else, right? So this is, yes, 1 fifth, and it's also 3 fifteenths. All right, and now over here, I'm going to right over here a bit, my, uh, my addition, the sum of unit fractions, to say that one-fifth, which we started with in our model, okay, is the same uh, as one of those explain things questions, but it's actually not as tricky as it seems. So uh, this be quick and easy. We're done. Two minutes here. Ready? See that? Go. See that? Well, that's explain time. why one-twelfth plus one-twelfth plus one-twelfth plus one-twelfth plus one-twelfth plus one and the last question is one of those explain things questions, but it's actually not as tricky as it seems. Okay. So uh, this is Watch. Quick, quick and easy. We're done. And why is the permanent signal? We're done. Two minutes here. Ready? Go. Explain why 1 12 plus 1 12 plus 1 12 again. plus 1 12 is the same as 1 third. If you look back up at 2C, that's... Okay, 2C. Why is the premise sign? Where we were given one third equals four twelfths. And so in our area model, so in my area model, what do you notice? You notice that one third takes up. Okay, he, he said he just said one third. 
right? Which is again one third. Usually do the is he doing the the white supremacist signal or the white supremacist sign? The same space is this has the same area as four twelfths. Therefore, those fractions are equal, and that's exactly what we can write here in my area model. One. So the fractions are equal. Believe it or not, yes, yeah, see, I told you, two minutes. Like, really, that's about all the explanation you need because you're referring back to the area model in 2C where you showed that 1 third equals 4 12. Well, whoo baby, yeah, you did it. You completed another homework time, so did I. And pat myself on the back and you too. Pat, 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 pat. All right, so uh, have a great time <laughs> and I'll see you again next time. It is once again homework time. <laughs> but anyway, I, like I said, I love exposing them um, because again, they'll direct me to certain things. And of course, uh, I'm hoping, let's hope that they don't copyright strike, give me a copy strike. But I'm doing this for the, um, you know, with the fair use to explain what's being done the um you know i mean it, it may bypass other people right but i pick up on these things now right and like i said when they when they direct me to certain videos or certain articles it's either because uh it coincided with how my targeting uh is going to uh get like how they're going to target me going forward right and so this is what they do this is what they do and like i said there's a reason why within the public school system they get they got rid of most of the black male teachers right so they can so we are indoctrinated and not only just with the curriculum but we're also psychologically uh brainwashed a uh, program uh you know when we're young it's it's embedded in our sub subconscious and they can activate it they can activate that programming anytime okay and as i say activate that programming okay um all right well i think that would be it for this video now if this video it hasn't gotten a copyright strike it'll be up so you guys can look at it if it is then i'll try to edit it in such a way that uh to avoid the copyright strike okay um but like i said it is what it is and i'm able to recognize these things um you know pretty easily now i should say and uh you know will not be subscribing <laughs> to this uh um channel and i definitely i'm not letting my daughter watch this any of these math uh videos that i use to help her <clears throat> i'm going to watch them before uh i let her watch them okay anyhow i'll talk to you guys in the next uh target individual experience target individual program Unlearn what you have learned.